Hey there, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Excellent. Well, you guys are done with the tour with Lamp of God last week, so how was the experience? Uh, it was great. Yeah, it was a great tour, great shows. Mm -hmm. All the bands were killer. Everybody, you know, it was a really good vibe the whole tour. And, uh, you know, we had a great time. And mm -hmm. I think Testament was able to play for they, they their intended notion for the tour was to be like, hey, we're going to go out and play to some people like, you know, some Kill Switch Engage fans right. or some fans that we wouldn't normally play for. And we got to so that was pretty cool that's amazing so there was probably a mix of guru metal fans and the metalcore fans as well indeed yeah yeah like you know every few shows you'd have the lineup of of teenage girls across the front row that were just <laughs> right. bored at the at the thrashers you know waiting waiting to sing along with kill switch but it seemed like everybody got along and 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 you know the crowds were, were great you know big mm -hmm. crowds everywhere and and the you know lamb of god's music obviously is is the most similar to testaments on on the tour so right lamb of god being the the major headliner there you know a lot of fans were there for lamb of god and testament so that was really cool that's that's really amazing now people have always said that you have a you know you have a damn good unique uh, drumming style uh, how easy was it for you to play the drum parts uh, in these new testament songs um well, since I, fortunately, every song was right in deeply within my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of, not a lot of like, you know, crazy hauling double bass where it's like, oh God, we've got that song coming up now, you know? And so the whole new record was, mm -hmm. you know, the tempos were really cool and, and the stuff that Eric had, pro you know, cause I, I learned the stuff off some demos, but right. Eric was explaining to me that um, if you're if you're familiar with that uh, Superior 2.0 uh, uh, drum drum machine thing yeah, that I the software drum, uh, yeah the software stuff right uh, Eric was telling me I just pulled a bunch of your stuff off there and it's basically your drums on mm -hmm. these demos so you know we figured you played it once you could probably play it again so. And, you know, there was some minor retooling by myself, you know, like right. I've said a few times, I like to give Eric some option anxiety. Like, <laughs> I know this, this is the, this is the beat you have on the, on the demo, but you want to try this one or that one or this other one. There are always an options. Yeah. So that's what I like to give to anybody I work with. And I think I did that with Eric. So, so that was pretty cool. And yeah, the, the drum parts were all pretty, pretty easy. And, you know, Eric is, is a very focused man in the in the studio you know he, he knows what he's looking for and i was just happy that i was able to give it to him and he you know i mean they always say like wow you know you're you're really easy to work with gene you know other guys we've worked with might not have been able to get this down as quick or or you know with a smile on their face or That's whatever awesome. they yeah, so I just I just try to make everybody happy. You're always the first name when it comes to Eric's mind. Now everybody knows that. And when there are plans for a New Testament record, it's always there in Eric's mind. So I know you have a commitment with Deathlock and now with Dark Angel as well. Do you still prefer to be a session drummer? Uh, indeed, yeah. And, you know, I got to admit, the Dark Angel commitments for over the year, they are pretty minor. Mm -hmm. You know, like we're, we're not going to go out and... and I, I would imagine that we are not going to go out and tour for six months or anything. So mm -hmm. there's going to be plenty of time for Testament when they're ready to start, you know, either writing their new album or rehearsing it or however they're going to do it. I'm not sure if we're all going to get together and write in a big in a big group mm -hmm. or or if it's going to be like, hey, guys, I got these demos, you know, check them out, learn them and let's get together and record them and do some tweaking on them. But whenever, you know, whenever Testament's ready to record their record, I'm, I'm sure I'll be there. And, and, you know, it's 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 going to be a killer record. You know, I think Testament just they're on fire and Absolutely. Got, they got a lot of a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of wind under their sails. So come out and write a ball crushing record, guys. And I'm there. That's that's absolutely true. I was having a chat with Alex uh, two days back and asked, I asked him about the new album. So he was like, yeah, we're probably uh, heading to studio in January or Feb. And uh, Eric has some demos which are influenced by Led Zeppelin, Judas Priest. So, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Well, we'll we'll thrash them up. I'll show up. Play <laughs> a bunch of beats. 
Well, make uh, make a killer testament record. That's true. Now, the drummer position is the most unstable one in metal bands. Uh, why do you think uh, that is the case? Um, because a good drummer is damn hard to find. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, right. Um, well, fortunately, there seems to be such like in a uh, a revolving crop of. Once you lose your drummer, mm -hmm. there's always a couple of guys that have, you know, good names and good, good uh, uh, bodies of work behind them that they could slide right in and right. take it these place, you know. And I, I, I like to think I'm irreplaceable, but you know, in a lot of circumstances, I'm, I'm not irreplaceable. I mean, you can, you can get anybody to do what I do. So, uh, oh, that's but, a tough one. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the way I figure, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's always somebody that can come along and, and, you know, say if I have to sit out a tour or something or I've got something else booked, mm -hmm. um, I think Testament is probably in the in the realm of where it's OK. Yeah, we got a few guys we could call. We can make it happen. Gene, if you can't make this one, you know, make the next one and we'll do something, you know, with somebody else. And right. I do try to make it so that doesn't happen. Mm hmm. So. Try to keep the schedule, you know, I try to schedule stuff around Testament, you know, they're, they're, you know, the, the, the most main thing that I've been doing this last year, you know, we had some death clock, uh, touring last year, but, right. uh, but, you know, as for 2014, I know there's going to be times when Testament's working on the new record and, you know, there's always a gap between recording and, and release. So, uh, that's where you know we've got a few Dark Angel things planned for, for next summer and and a couple of things before that. But I I I, I don't believe Dark Angel is going to be like a okay guys we're reuniting the band we're we're going for it six eight month tour tour mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah we want to play a you know we want to play a few shows and mm -hmm. write a write a record you know because I mean, we've always gotten along and I've always I've always loved all the guys in the band and. I'm looking forward to getting together with the dudes and going out and having some good times. Well, that's amazing. I was actually wondering, like, since you guys are reforming for a limited number of appearances next year, are there any plans of working on an album next year or you guys are going to see how it works out with these shows and then decide? Well, I suppose it's a little from column A and a little from column B. But okay. I do know that we're um, we we would like to record but you know the state of the recording industry now like does that how would that even go down you know right. would we sign to a label or would we just like finance it ourselves and put it out ourselves there's a lot to be determined and True. um you know there is interest you know a, a bunch of labels have reached out and said hey if you guys are interested let us know mm -hmm. you know let's please please you know we're, all, we're there yeah put a call into our office when you guys are ready to do whatever you guys are ready to do so so there you go that that's great now you know dark angel has attained the kind of underground legendary status from so many years now with this reunion it must be important for you guys to stand and exceed the expectations your fan have from you absolutely absolutely exceed the expectations and that's why everybody is going into this uh this round of shows uh with the mindset of um, like you know, Ron Reinhardt put it best when he says, you know, just being good mm -hmm. is not good enough. You know, sure. we have to be great. We have to be amazing. We have to be better than we've ever been. And I know that that attitude is 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 one that we all share. So, in order for us to make this reunion be awesome, because we are about the last of the bands Absolutely. To, to reunite, you know, so, um, so it's not like we're in the middle of the glut of bands right. that are reuniting. It's like, we're about the only one. So there's going to be a, a, I suppose, a bit of a spotlight on, mm. on, on it. And so that's why we have to be great. And I think we will be, you know, everybody's working really hard. Hard, right. And, and so everybody, you know, Ron is in training, uh, Jim and Eric are, are playing constantly and, and, Gear you know, they, yeah, absolutely. And the band has rehearsed without me, uh, they, to some, uh, to some, uh, 
to some drum tracks I laid down. So yes. it was me, even though I wasn't there. Some small studio uh, updates, minor videos where up, these guys were jamming on a few tunes. Yeah. So everybody's everybody's already in the swing. And, you know, oh, I've been going back and reviewing some old Dark Angel stuff. And, you know, I'm starting to write some riffs and stuff. And, and I'm just channeling the feeling mm -hmm. of of being 18, 19, 17, <laughs> like right. put, the, put the guitar in your hands and what's going to come out, you know, right. uh, these days I, I write in a different style than I used to. So it's really fun and absolutely like riding a bike when channeling the old emotions <laughs> of that game. Absolutely. You know, write it heavy and write it brutal. <laughs> That, that that that's true you know uh, like you mentioned like you tend to come up with the riffs so when you do session work uh, you're very careful to play parts appropriate to the music you're given in your own projects how much input uh, you know do you have musically uh, do you tell guitarists that their riffs suck <laughs> um well i since dark angel i have tried to i i've i've grown up a bit and i've tried to become a little more um diplomatic mm -hmm. and back in the dark angel days i would say no that's no good no that sucks no that's terrible uh -huh. now i'll try to put a little bit of sugar on it you know and say hey that's great but you know and be better yeah and you know that's i you know we've all grown up a bit i was 17 18 19 20 when when i was deeply entrenched in dark angel and then 21 22 23 when it was like i just kind of took it it got thrust into my hands the mm -hmm. leadership position and so you know these days and i know i'm, I'm not perfect i've got i listen i when i review like say a time does not heal or something a lot of that sounds like uh I don't want to discount anything, but a lot of it is like, God, dude, did you have to <laughs> put every single riff that you wrote in these songs? Like, right. have some censorship, some editing skills. And, and <laughs> I'm trying to do that now. So, I mean, I can't imagine, like, if, if, there, if, if there's another Dark Angel record that the songs are going to top, like, say, five minutes or something, you know, because those nine-minute songs are just like, okay, yeah, that's... That's that's great for some bands, but you you know like let's let's recapture the energy of the old days and, right. and write some blistering you know shorter songs that just kick you in the teeth you know I mean we never did anything like Slayer and write like two and a half minute songs or anything like that but um, but you know Darkness Descends I mean that was seven songs thirty four right. minutes so Jesus I guess that does kind of that, that's yeah, wonderful that's, because uh, thrash metal. Uh, can never have nine minute song it's it's gonna be like you know, what can i say it needs to make an impact so within a range of three to four or five is always uh, acceptable i agree you know and that's something i did learn after after putting out time is not here it's like boy i'll never do that again <laughs> wonderful now as a drummer uh, how would you describe the difference in your drumming style between the sound of strapping young lad fear factory testament and deadlock well it's each band has its own approach and mm -hmm. like say with like say like say take like death for instance there was a lot of double bass in death but there was a lot of hand work as well right so that was kind of an all-encompassing uh approach like lots of hands lots of feet and then along came strapping, and that was a lot of feet. The hands try to be a little more tasty with them. You know, you don't have to go freaking out and writing pro progressive parts or jazz right. fusion-y parts because the music didn't call for that. You know, the music was busy enough and chaotic enough that, hey, if you just play some really cool beats and lay some lay the foundation, these songs are going to be great. It right. doesn't have to be the Gene Hoagland show. And like, say, when Testament came along, like, say, the demonic record, I, I, I caught a lot of flack for the demonic album because right. they said, well, Gene sucks with, with Testament, but he used to be cool with, with death. <laughs> I said, well, you know, you, maybe people don't understand that I'm trying to serve the songs. I'm trying right. to, you know, the Testament song does, you know, 
they've they've established what what they want from their drums and their music and that doesn't necessarily call for a lot of busy hand jazz jazzy hand work so testament was a little more no frills meat and potatoes real solid right. uh, the demonic album and that's what was required and um play you know, according it, to the situation exactly and like with the latest testament record that was that was so you know it, it, it was definitely like like hey gene we need a hand here mm -hmm. you know we we have some drum parts written um our current drummer paul bostaff he 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 can't do the session at the moment right we need somebody to come in and just you know kind of do what we need do what we tell you to do and i was like that's fine i'm i'm a session guy i want to i want to make you guys happy i want to see you guys attain your vision. vision so right eric if you've you know if you want to keep me here all day playing for 10 hours on a song until it sounds right to you i'm fine with that and you know that's fortunately i don't think it worked out like that you know spend a few hours on each song but um you know and i think death clock for me i suppose at the moment that is the most all encompassing mm -hmm. project because there's a lot of feet and then there's a lot of hands as well right. so uh, you know try to be tasty with the hands and and um that's where i just trying to be a well-rounded is helpful mm -hmm. in situations like that where um you know it's like okay this song calls for a lot of double bass and just psychotic right. bpms and this other song calls for you know the, the BPMs are fine and the double bass isn't over the top, but uh, you know try to do some tasty stuff. And like for instance, I don't know if you've heard the latest Metalocalypse output, the 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 rock opera thing. Uh, no, I haven't. I should have checked it out. Um, that is definitely the most all-encompassing thing. You know, so it has both the hands and the feet. So you balance it much. out. And it has a lot of Broadway elements to it too, wow. which is like, you know, drummer, don't do anything here that's <laughs> that's you know psychotic. Just stick to the stick to the template. You know, don't do anything too wild. Just right. play the beat. And then there's a lot of stuff where it's like, okay, go sick. You know, it's a big, thick, fat, hairy metal <laughs> song. So right. play thick, fat, and hairy. And there's a lot of that on the latest Death Clock. And and. I you know you can get it on iTunes. You can you can uh, preview it on iTunes even you know song by song and so. How did it feel playing alongside a genius, an amazing musician called Devin Townsend? So I think Devin Townsend influenced you the most on being able to hear the entire final song upon writing. Absolutely, you know, and that's one thing that that we had a mutual respect for each other's abilities mm -hmm. and and sensibilities and you know one thing i think devin always knew and felt from me was that gene's going to supply exactly what i'm looking for right. and there was not a lot of uh micromanagement from devin's part because it was just kind of like hey i'm the leader but i've surrounded myself with real capable dudes and guys that are also next level thinkers and right. in this uh, in my music the next level thinking that i require from my Players. bandmates right. is um to serve the music the best you know not mm -hmm. try to make it the gene show or the jed show or right. byron show just you know lay it down and make it really awesome mm -hmm. and next level but uh keep it within the confines of what the song looks for like on the uh, infinity record i did that whole album with a single kick you know wow. uh, and you know because the, the there wasn't a lot of you know there wasn't any hauling double bass songs right. or anything so it was a way different vibe so yeah i played it on a five piece drum set uh, you find it difficult to sometime you know a transition from your general kit which you use with many bands and then you shift to five piece kit um, I enjoy doing it, 
Mm-hmm. So it's always a fun challenge, you know. It, it's it's not like work, and it's not like oh my god, that other kick is now not there. Oh Jesus, <laughs> what do I do now? Right. No, it's like hey, you get to you know you get to explore the the right foot only. So, and you know, I was a super uh, before I had double bass. I played the hell out of my right kick all the time with the right foot. So. Right. Um, if there's things that need to sound like double bass, I can do that on one foot. Um, just kind of channel what it's, what it's like to be 14 years old and playing again, you know. I about to ask you that in the absence of double kicks, you perfected double bass drumming using a single kick and hi-hat pedal. I did, yeah. And that was, you know, that was a lot of times you would, you would just kind of alternate the two, like start the hi-hat on the down and then the second... You know, you would play it just like you would, you know, back back in the day, double bass was booga baga booga baga booga baga, booga, booga <laughs> you know, not the right. fastest. So. so it was easy to do it, you know, just one foot. And it was also easy to do the the three beats on the feet hmm. and then lay off on the snare. You know, doing that sort of thing. So I was pretty competent at doing both. So that's why when it was time to throw another double, throw another bass drum on there, I was like, well, you've already been kind of doing this for a while so just spaz out and let your feet go really fast that's wonderful now it's been more than two decades you know you've played with so many different bands with different style is there a musical style you still wish to learn or something which you haven't played yet um well i tell you it would it would be fun to really explore a lot of the shuffles Mm -hmm. out there like but to have a, a, a an album of 10 shuffles might get abrasive to people or, or boring or something but right. the shuffle is my favorite beat to play um uh so you know it's, it's something where i get to explore that but that's one thing i've 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 tried to do like if I ever had any jazz fusion leanings, that would have definitely been in the early to mid '90s. And mm-hmm. fortunately, with death, it's like, hey, well, you can incorporate that here. You know, like with Dark Angel, it might not have been as easy. And right. I must admit, like since I was writing the majority of the riffs for Dark Angel, the drums were kind of taking a back seat. So, mm-hmm. on Time Does Not Heal, I tried to do drums that you know serve the song but i tell you i was you know guitarist first drummer second around right. that but uh you know and then a, a lot of the stuff that i did with devin like hey if i ever did want to get my like big fat rock mm. yaya's out mm. got to do that with devin so right Fortunately, there's not a lot, you know, I love to play in a slamming funk band, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I would make that like such a priority that I would leave everything else behind to solely concentrate on it. And these days having the time to do anything like that, I definitely don't have the time that I used to. Mm -hmm. Like one of the highlights of my playing for me over the, you know, the past few years was getting to play with a band from the Bay Area called the Kehoe Nation. and. They have a couple of albums out on iTunes and, and, you know, available on hard copy. And I've known Brian Kehoe, the the leader of that band. I've known him for, you know, approaching 20 years uh, when I was, I got to know him when I was doing the Demonic record from from, uh, Testament. And his band at the time, Merv, that's Mm M-I-R-V, all all capitals with periods, M dot, I dot. Are right, not, right. Not. Um, they're harder to find, but they're you could find them on 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 YouTube. They became my favorite band, you know, because wow. I I of course metal, thrash metal, aggressive metal. That's my favorite style of music. But you know, I, I love Steve funk. I love you know fusion. You know things like that. I love classic rock. So mixing things but, up. Yeah, and. You know, back when I was in Dark Angel, putting out Darkness Descends and Leave Scars, you know, brutal, visceral, visceral thrash records. My, my favorite band at the time was Fishbone. So, um, you know, that's Merv is was one of those bands that, you know, yes, I play brutal music, but I love listening to this band. I love going to see Merv live. They make me smile. Wow, that's uh, amazing. 
Kehoe Nation was uh, for Brian Kehoe when he left Merv. He put was different from Merv, and it was a a real uh, twangy psychobilly approach. Um, and so playing with those guys, that was really fun. That got to, that got to get some of my non-metal yayas out. So <laughs> I've been fortunate that I just haven't only done straight metal. Now right. I'm 30 years into straight metal and I'm frustrated because I never got to do this or that or the other. Absolutely. So I've, I've been able to do a whole lot of stuff outside my genre that I chose, my favorite genre, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. That's, that's really awesome. I'm, I'm glad, you know, you shared uh, these details with me. I would love to check these bands out very soon. So awesome, the first double bass kit you ever played was Dave Lombardo's, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. And we know he likes to play using two bass drums. So you might have given him some advice back then. Um, I, 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 I did um, just from the, 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 the three that I played on his kit before he's like, dude, I didn't know you played double bass. How long did you play double bass? You know, all that stuff. Um, you know, and I was just like, okay, well, let me see what I'm doing. You know, he's like, how are you doing that? You're playing so fast and God, you're just, you're, you're nonstop. You know, it's, it, you, you have a lot of power and you're, you're, you're unrelenting, you know, kind of. And I'm like, well, let me see what I'm doing. I'm concentrating on my left foot. He's mm -hmm. like, well, that's what's given me my problem. I'm like, well, Try this. Oh, that's you know? a problem with me as well. I'm a drummer too, so I find it difficult with my left foot. I had a feeling you were a drummer. I could see your uh, your Skype photo here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, well, that that happens, you know. And one thing that I've done my whole career is like, if it's a you know a pretty simple beat, if I could play it with my right foot, I I play it with my left foot as well. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, that was really fun before the trigger days, like right. back in, in, in playing with death live. If there was anything where the kicks weren't doing hauling 30 second notes, if they were doing like some of the simpler beats, like say in like spiritual healing, healing. or, or, you know, some, some of the, the simple songs that don't, that weren't asking for double bass at that part, I would right. play them with two, two feet doing the same thing at the same time. And you know, just, just left and right foot in unison. And yeah, it's a challenge to make that not flam at first. That's the biggest challenge because one of your feet wants to lag behind the other one by just the, a 64th note or right. something, a right. flam style note. And so just, you know, being able to concentrate to bringing both down at the same time, that was the only issue. And I, I, that didn't take very long to get over that, but it was just, really fun to do that so if i'm ever in a situation where i'm playing without triggers mm -hmm. that's my go-to move it's like hey you got two kick drums coming through the pa now you know it's like right. one was loud two was even louder and mm -hmm. it gets a cool little tone and one thing that that triggers don't allow you to do is precisely what i'm talking about Absolutely. because when you, hit, when you hit triggers at the same time they have a a flange you know they have this kind of like a, a popcorn sound right when you're hitting triggers at the same time it just i can drive a sound man crazy <laughs> right when, when he's doing our sound for the first time and we have a lot of time for me to do the sound check or whatever i'll sit there and pop both kick drums down and watch him start losing his mind My. like <laughs> looking at his board like what the fuck what is happening here i'm getting this crazy tone and Finally, he'll he'll like look at the channels or something on the board, and he'll see two kick drum things are going. He's like, oh, "Is that you doing that, you dick?" Mm -hmm. Oh, that that's really awesome. Now you have a new DVD coming up. Uh, what can fans expect to see? Uh, the Atomic Clock Strikes Two. Uh, how different is it from the first? Well, one thing right off the bat that it's way different is the uh, production values have gone drastically up. Like okay. there's the one thing about the, I mean, it's the, the one thing about the first atomic clock, like I loved it. I loved the content, but it had, it was definitely a DIY sort of approach. Mm -hmm, right. And that's where, um, you know, I was very hands on with the editing and, 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 but you know, Hey, we, we weren't able to film it in HD. I don't even know if 
I mean, HD was just kind of coming out at the yeah. time. So it's not like, you know, my camera team had, oh, yeah, we've all got HD cameras. Let's go. <laughs> on, on the new one, it's all in HD. I recorded it in a great studio. I have the engineer that I, I, I wish that I had on the first right. one. So the sound is going to be killer. And, you know, we have that one trailer out, um, you know, kind of a little teaser trailer. And that's pretty much how the whole thing's going to sound. Real solid. Sounds like it's, you know, you're in the studio with it, Gene. It and sounds awesome. I, I checked your trailers today. It came out. It sounded amazing. And uh, you have got a license to so many new songs. now, So it's great to have a bunch of songs from death as well as testament as well and uh, the other projects as well that's right and that's that's the other main thing that's that's way different it's like uh on the first atomic clock um you were able it, to I, use the mechanized tracks and i i still have the dvd with me cool awesome yeah mechanism was was it was it was a great um I was fortunate to be in that position to have that material to use mm -hmm. because it showed off the drums pretty well because that's that's still to this date the most psychotic drum album I've ever done, um, and and utilizing it in that form in mm -hmm. terms of needing to get licenses. My license for that was I told Chris, the guitarist from Mechanism, that. Hey Chris, I'm putting five mechanism songs on the new DVD. What do you think? He's like, "Wow, awesome, cool." You know, so <laughs> right. So that was that. I didn't have to jump through any hoops or anything. So and I I you know, I I I chose that route on the first one because I knew I was going to be doing a second one mm -hmm. and a third one. So I and I even mentioned at the time when the first Atomic Clock came out that you know, I I did mention that on the next one I'll be getting licenses and uh -huh. Well, sure enough, I did. So that's wonderful. So we have even the death song. So of course, there are fans out there who want to see uh, the the early days of how those drum parts, uh, amazing drum parts, were nailed. Sure, and you know, boy, it, it ha fortunately, I've been before I tracked the the death songs. I had gone out and done some some clinics. Mm -hmm. Some Gene, Ho some pr predecessory Gene Hoagland experience things. Yes, where, you where did I in did, October. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. I did. I I did some uh, some you know where I played. You know, I focused on the individual thought patterns record. So right. you know, all those songs were were pretty fresh, and it's real interesting playing to you know twenty year old guitar tracks mm -hmm. when there was no click track involved. You know, and my meter, boy, I was, at that time, I was the atomic egg timer at best. You know, I was, I was right. no atomic clock. So, uh, you know, my meter was, you know, there's certain things where like certain transitions, I, I feel them tight now, mm -hmm. but 20 years ago when I was playing them, I felt them tight then, but they sure weren't when you're like, oh, wow, right. that transition. I, and then you listen back to the, to the recording, you're like, oh yeah, that is pretty ugly well how do we you know i feel sorry for Chuck having to track over <laughs> right now uh it was unfortunate for us to not see you live last year in india with testament uh so there are many fans out here who want to see you live so when can we expect you to come here for a clinic or with other bands you play with well i'm willing to come over to clinics at any time if there's you know an an interested party which with which to bring me over and and you know can can you know make it so we all don't lose a bunch of money right. I'm, I'm 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 down for that and if testament books more you know the only reason i couldn't do that testament thing was uh i was in the middle of a death clock tour that right. you know i'd been booked months before too so that was just an unfortunate situation but uh um you know I, i'm trying to we're all trying to keep real transparent schedules for each other like everybody that's interested in using gene is like okay we we know the schedule we have to work with and you know and you know i try to give testament the 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 major block of time time or, right so uh so yeah so if i'm sure things will work out and i'm sure testament will no doubt be coming back to india i would imagine and i, I would imagine i'll be a part of that one 
Wonderful. Jean, thank you so much for spending some time with us uh, to have a chat. It was an honor to have you with us on Metalwani. Well, VTech, it was, it was, the honor was mine. Absolutely. And so uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it.